people who look forward, who look forward to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you read the biographies of some of the early Muslims, and they would say things at the time of death, like marhaban bin mawt, welcome death. Or the, one of the early Muslims who was on his deathbed, and he started crying. And so the people thought that he's crying because he's going to miss his children and his family. And he said, I'm not crying because of that. But I'm crying because I'm going to miss Qiyamul Layl. Speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depth of night. And I'm going to spend thousands of years in my grave, not able to make the slightest dua for myself, or the slightest dhikr for myself. We said, how can we get to that level where we look forward to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we began by mentioning the story of the scholar that was asked, why do people hate death, not afraid of death? Why do they hate the idea of dying? And he said, when someone has not prepared in, for it, when someone spent, spends their whole life making preparations to live in one place, and then you uproot them and take them to another entirely new place where they haven't made any preparations, they don't look forward to going there. So we began by mentioning making preparations in the next life so that you look forward to it. And we mentioned building homes in a Jannah, and that's our palaces in a Jannah. And you do that by praying the 12 rak'at in the night and day, the ones that we do after the salah. And then we said we're going to talk about making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today. Because dhikr, as far as I know, is the only way to take back your life. And this is a little dramatic, but the minute you're born, what happens? The minute you're born, you start dying instantly. I know it's a little dramatic, but that's the truth. You're born and you start dying. And even if your health is improving, you're dying. And as you're sitting here, you're dying. And every second brings you closer to your death. So time is just passing and your life is time. They say that if you lived to the age of 75 years, you would have spent close to 12 years watching television. 12 years sitting watching television. So you look at how your life is passing, all right? You're going to spend one third of your life asleep. 12 years watching television will make a discount for Muslims, 9 years watching television, alright? You will spend 11 years at work, and from those 11 years, 2 years will be in meetings. You will spend 6 months of your life waiting in line. Waiting in line to order your sandwich, waiting in line at the airport, waiting in line to pay a bill. You spend 6 months of your life just waiting in line like this. You will spend 5 months of your entire life complaining. For whatever, the restaurant, the service, complaining. Five months of your life, straight complaints. You will spend three and, or three and a half years of your life in your car. Or three and a half years in other studies, eating. Maybe even more for Muslims. For that one we increase for Muslims. Hold on. Yeah? Hold on. <laughs> eating, right? You will spend three, of, three years of your life sitting on the toilet and brushing your teeth. Not at the same time. <laughs> but maybe you should do it at the same time just to save some time. Yeah? One study said the average person spends 43, the average male spends 43 minutes staring at women and not regular looking, but looking, looking, you know? Single brother looking. That amounts to a year of your life looking at women. One year of this straight. <laughs> and you have to explain this year to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same study said women spend 23 minutes every single day staring at men, and that comes to be six months out of their lifetime staring at strange men. Now, if I were to ask you to guess how much of your time will be spent in the five obligatory salawat, not taraweeh, not night prayers, just in the five obligatory salawat. Take a guess, how long? 25 years. Huh? 20, 20, 25, 25 years? No. Huh? <laughs> Two years. Two years? They say about a year, about a year of your life will be spent in the five obligatory prayers. About one year. Because if it's 45 minutes a day, it comes up to a year in your lifetime. And what a shame, Wallahi, that we're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with three years in the bathroom and one year of salah. So your life is just passing. They say you will spend 20 weeks of your life on hold. Your friend tells you just one second. The company puts you on hold, they put the elevator music. 20 weeks of your life straight will be on hold. The only way to take back your life, as far as I know, and if you know any other technique, share it with me. The only way to take back your life is through dhikr of Allah Azza wa Making a remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, whoever says subhanAllah wa bihamdihi 100 times, 
There will be nobody on the day of judgment who has done anything better than you, except for the person who said it more than you. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. How long does it say Subhanallah wa bihamdi? Does it take to say Subhanallah wa bihamdi 100 times at normal speed? Because a lot of times when we make dhikr, it's not normal speed. Yani after salah, you find some people, Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah
making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's get ourselves used to constantly making dhikr of Allah azza wa jal. That's the only way to take back your life because it's just past. Zakum al-khair for your attentive listening. Sorry for going so long. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum.